Hello, I am Aiden, and welcome back to This Just In. This is the second episode, and today we will be covering Five Nights at Freddy's. I am here with my friends Jay, and returning for a second time here, Max. How's it going, everybody? Guys, all right. Hey, guys. Uh, <laughs> thank you guys for coming on to my podcast uh, to talk to me about this silly, goofy little game that Absolutely. includes so murder excited. and death and such absolutely i'm so That's excited what makes it great i think i'm so excited guys yeah i'm really hyped wait drop a comment if you like five nights at freddy's right now editor please put in a picture <laughs> so five nights at freddy's is a horror game that uh we all know and love uh, it features the first game at least features our favorite freddy fazbear bonnie chica Foxy, and basically, <laughs> you are a security guard, and you're trying to defend yourself from the evil animatronic forces. Well, you're, right. you're, you're trying to keep them from getting into your office so that they don't kill you and um, stuff you in a suit. But, um, yeah. So, 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 let's talk about our introductions to Five Nights at Freddy's. Yeah, um, Me personally? beyond just a game, uh, it was also a part of Me my is. childhood, it was a part of Max's childhood is part of Jay's. Is uh, we we all loved it. General populace. So yeah, I mean, what, why don't you guys give like what you think of the game and all that? So 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 so, I was introduced by Markiplier, cause he was he's he's a funny guy and he was hello everybody. Um. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> sorry. You could... Okay, no, um, I just watched it and I was really nervous. I probably had the volume all the way off and the brightness all the way down, and um, I never wanted to play it. And when I made my mommy saw it on her phone, she didn't know how to play and she got jump scared three times. But she wasn't scared, but I was petrified. Anyways. Yeah. Uh, Jay, what about you? I had a similar uh, experience with first time learning about it. I watched a video, also from Markiplier. Shout out to Markiplier. Big Mark. <laughs> Big, big <laughs> Shout fan. out to Markiplier. Yeah. So you know, I was watching this bit, you know. Was, yeah, my first uh, experience learning about Five Nights at Freddy's was through Markiplier as well. And I remember it was so scary. I was basically just not watching the video. I had the volume down on probably like the, the lowest setting and my phone was turned around. So I just didn't see <laughs> the screen at all. I don't even really know how I, I watched it. I, mean, I read the comments. Yeah. I saw some pictures. I scrolled through. I just skipped all the scary parts. Were you hiding yeah. in the comments? I was hiding in the comments, you're right. I had a similar experience. Like, it seems like we all had the same introduction to it, where uh, Markiplier made a video, and uh, we mm -hmm. all watched it. But I, I, yeah. that was kind of how a lot of people got introduced to it. Markiplier was the big name back then, the big YouTuber back in the day. King of FNAF, you might say. Well, that's what he became later. We mm -hmm. weren't ready for his rise to stardom. <laughs> his monarchy. <laughs> we weren't ready for his Five Nights at Freddy's monarchy, but... Yeah, I mean, he, he posted that video, I saw it, it said, like, scariest game ever made, and so I was like, oh, wow, uh, I'm gonna watch this, and then, uh, so I clicked on it, and then it was like, I watched the entire video with no volume, and, uh, because I was terrified, uh, and I didn't want to get jump scared, um, that's kind of my relationship that I had with it in any instance of where I was experiencing it, where I would play the game, or watch it, or something, and then it would just be completely silent or something but then i would still get scared by the jump scares when they came on screen because i wasn't expecting it but i think it was more it, five nights at freddy's is really good at building anticipation and i think mm -hmm. that it and so like you're dealing with the stress of like these monsters basically coming after you um and so it's all that build up and then just the payoff is the funny animal screaming in your face <laughs> and then you get the death screen so. i think um an example of that anticipation it's like if you die to, if you lose all your power and then freddy like plays a little the little hor, 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 right and yeah. then um it cuts for like five seconds and then jump scares you you're like oh when is it gonna happen and sometimes he um, sometimes he gets you immediately sometimes he, yeah, it's exactly. like so it's like there's no actual you can never expect it. there's no actual consistencies mm -hmm. yeah so it's like it's not um not only do you uh like have to like deal with all that like, you need to like watch all the cameras like you need to make sure that foxy doesn't leave the pirate's cove and just start running down after you and stuff like that like, once you learn the game you really are only looking at one camera but it's still stressful because uh 
on the third night, Freddy starts to move, and he's pretty. He's very Doesn't elusive. And you're not ready for Freddy. I'll just say that much. <laughs> you're not ready for Freddy. Um, because you, cause you need to stare at him, but but you also need, so that he doesn't move cameras. But you also need to look at Foxy. So it's like it gets very chaotic, and it continues okay. to do, and it continues to get even more crazy as the games progress. Oh, sorry. But I think one thing that makes it like incredibly effective as a horror game was not only like was it incredibly unique for its time. You can't really you couldn't like move at all. You're, yeah, you're completely stuck in one room, and that adds like a layer of like helplessness. Like, if you do get face to face with these things the only thing blocking you away is a door and the power that drains pretty quick mm. so uh, um, micro it's also like a lot of micromanagement yeah. the ambience yeah, yeah, yeah. just like the general darkness and like you know the vibe so it's like uh, the, the fact that i played it with no volume i wasn't i was basically not experiencing that game at all because a lot of it is based on sound cues and like uh just the ambiance and everything so getting the real mm -hmm. experience is from hearing sound but it wasn't until like like a year or so ago i i the first time i played it was like a couple years ago and i played it and i tried to beat it in one go so i could refund it <laughs> I, tried, I tried to beat it within two hours so that i could refund it uh, and then i got to night four and um i kept dying to foxy because for some reason he was like coming out way quicker than he should have been um mm -hmm. and so i just refunded it and then i came back to it this year i bought it again and then i uh because of the uh, the, the movie which we'll talk about later but um... and then there's the the other games um the newer ones in which i like speaking of the ambience and stuff i feel like security breach at least which is one of the most new ones except for the new vr game it really doesn't have that same vibe with like the whole darkness or whatever it's mm -hmm. like it's like not even a FNAF game. It's just the characters are the same. Yeah, it, I think that's it. it kind of became like um, a Funko Pop game. I don't know. It, <laughs> in recent recent yeah, times, sure. I think like I think there's a lot more characterization in the in the new games, but uh, like like Security Breach is really cool because the characters like, actually have personalities and stuff like that. It's like mm -hmm. it's very high production value, but it also like isn't very high production value because the games are like unfinished. So yeah, I don't, it's very mixed with me. Say something about that too. Like, the game strays so far away from the the original, like the original games, mainly because it's more story based, and I think that takes away a lot of the scariness yeah. in the games. But also, since it's such a late installment, and it's there's so many other games before it, the like the the scare factor of like it being something new and scary is is like extremely hard to replicate after so many years. Because it's been like. It's like five games right before that. Yeah. So I think they wanted to switch things up a bit with Security Breach. But, um, no, there's six think... games because there's Pizzeria Simulator mm. or whatever. But, oh, uh, right. After yeah. that comes after Sister Location. But yeah, then, yeah, um, I mean, this current state it's in with the new stuff is, it, it, it's cool, but the older stuff is definitely better. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. I yeah. think that, um, Part of the issue with the newer games is that, like, you're kind of spoon-fed all the story. And, like, part, like, part of the fun with the older ones is, like, you know, with all the theories, it was, like, a community-based thing, figuring out what happened instead of just, like, and then Freddy went to the thing and then he died and whatever. So, like, that's just, like, boring. <laughs> well, it's actually, yeah. well, that's actually good you bring that up because we should talk about the story of Five Nights at Freddy's, right? Because that's, like, yeah. that, uh, if you're a fan of it, you're probably a big fan of the story. Because uh, if you're if you like Five Nights at Freddy's, you like the story, or you or you hate it and you just ignore it. But um, I don't really think many people hate the story. I think some people Maybe. just can't understand it because it does yeah. get it's, kind of it's a lot to take in for sure. <laughs> I mean, yeah. people like explain it in videos, but like it's seven different videos just to explain the story itself. It's like, so I'll give the basic rundown. So it basically um. There, it starts off with this guy, his name's William Afton, he creates a pizzeria, right, with animatronic characters, kind of like Chuck E. Cheese. Um, mm -hmm. And then he starts to use this place, like, he's like a genius, like, he's a master, like, mechanic, he can create all types of robots and stuff like that, and he can make them super lifelike, but, to, but he's also a psychopath, so he mm -hmm. starts to use this pizzeria as, like, a cover-up for, like, several different child murders so that he could avoid getting caught for it 
he just stuffs all the children inside of the suits and basically the suits the gain monster. the souls of the vengeful souls of the children so then that's kind of why they're coming after you um mm -hmm. yeah because you're wearing the so uniform they think, they think and they think that you're yeah. the guy yeah yeah in the third game kind of that like he died at some point and that was because he was wearing a suit when he was killing these children and at one point uh the, william afton the killer um after the third game he gets established as like the main villain of the series mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and it found out that at one point uh because yeah okay so basically there's william afton being the insane person that he is creates these things called spring lock suits where basically the metal parts yeah, yeah. i got you i got you the sure. metal parts are used to hold the animatronic so like the exoskeleton mm. or no wait endoskeleton sorry. yeah yeah endoskeleton. Of, the, of the animatronics in place so there's like these metal bars that like spring lock close right and they're supposed to be so you can unlock them and you could wear the suit itself but what happened was spring lock failures where these metal bars that are made to hold the endoskeleton would like, close on a human body which would kill them because it was like <clears throat> Yeah. yeah, and so that's basically what happened at one point. William did have to confront the souls of these children, and when he was being cornered by them, he put on the suit as a means to like, like uh, calm them down. I guess. Like scare them. Uh, or yeah, to scare them away. away. Like to like oh, okay. threat to like threaten them, and because that was the same thing they saw right before they died, and so it's like you know, obviously that's uprooting some trauma, and then while in the suit it fails on him and then he dies inside the suit that he used to kill all those children with and then so the third game you see he's still the third game you see he's still alive and yeah, basically he's still kicking it. yeah he's still kicking it yeah william it, afton is really still out there he's with... alive or he's just like in a, a reanimated corpse oh no he, he's almost. super dead but like yeah he's he's dead but his soul is and so yeah, basically yeah. what he found uh, actually this is actually something very important uh so what? So the reason he continued to kill children was because he found out that these kids leave something called remnant, which he consumes that and it allows him to like live forever. So that's the only reason when he died, he was able to be basically revived again because he had the like remnant of these children keeping him like keeping him kicking, you know, uh, mm -hmm. ready, to, <laughs> ready to put another knife in someone. Um, so in the third game, you're like working at this uh, horror attraction that was based off of the tragedy of the previous attraction, based off of a pizzeria. Like so it's made to be stuff. scary, but... Yeah, yeah, so the place is, you're in is built to be scary, but they picked up the... I don't know, in the context of the story, I don't understand why they picked up this, like, robot that smells like rotting flesh, and were like... You know, I know why. We should use I know this. why. Oh, wait, you do? I know why. Okay. Yeah, so... The place is called Fazbear's Frights, yeah. and actually, it's not a it's not a whole new establishment. It's the same Freddy Fazbear's Pizza that that Spring Trap William they Afton died in. Oh. So they open up they to excavate area. They open up a wall, and that's where they find us find the suit. Oh, uh, I'm so glad that you that you uh that you that that I have you guys here because I would have completely botched that. All right, See, okay, so that's just to go to show you how confusing how the story to Five Nights at Freddy's. Yeah. Is. But yeah, so basically, so for what I'm hearing now is they basically took the old establishment that he died in. According to my sources. And, uh, and, yeah, and his body was still in there. So he's just there. And basically you as the security guard are now fending off this, this uh, guy. Fending off uh, William Afton. So you're going against the dude who started all this in the first place. And funny little thing, it actually turns out that the person you're playing as in these games is the or son. Some of them. Is the son oh, of William them, yeah. Afton. No way. So, in the first game, you're playing as his son, and you're investigating. Look, so, okay. I'm gonna, gonna take a deep dive here. Alright, so, the fifth installment of the game, Five Nights at Freddy's Five, Sister Location, it ends with uh, Michael Afton basically uh, getting scooped out, his insides get scooped out, and then this big animatronic that's kind of like, I guess, the antagonist of the game goes inside his skin, sort of, to escape Ennard. out. Yeah, entered to escape wherever he was to be like a human again. Yeah. And that left Michael in a pretty bad condition. So he was yeah, basically um, just a skeleton so and skin. Yeah. And he's, he's he stayed alive. Purple. He's purple. Yeah, he turned purple because he rotted. 
And what he, he does wondered. is, that's actually one of the earlier games in like a timeline history. After that, he goes to the first pizzeria, and then that's when the first game happens. So he's already dead. He's the oh, right. He's the purple the guy. The first game, he's already and dead. And then, yeah, he's already dead because he's because he wants to get rid of all the locations. He burns it down at the end of every game. It was a newspaper that says this location burned down. So at the end of the week, or like something Michael, was tampered Michael, with. Yeah, Michael Afton burns down the first establishment. Well, why does he stay there for a week, though? Eh. <laughs> because it gives five I don't know. Because it's it's almost it's as five if nuts. it's almost as if Scott Cawthon uh, didn't actually write a story until Matt Pat started making videos about it. Matt Pat, yeah. <laughs> Matt Pat, uh, Matt Pat's a YouTuber, by the way. He's a he he did like theory videos, and basically he was so popular. And uh, the Scott Cawthon, the creator of Five Nights at Freddy's, was kind of just like, okay, so this guy's kind of like writing a story for me. I'm just going to run with it and see how it goes. And so he just kind of let this YouTuber write the game story. (laughs) So that's why there's a lot of inconsistencies like that, where it's like, why is this guy who's planning to destroy this establishment staying here for five days? But yeah. Yeah, he's just essentially just going around and, I guess, freeing, quote unquote, freeing all the souls that died and that are in the suits. At each location to just yeah. like undo what his dad did and stuff like that yeah Pretty much so awesome um it doesn't make any sense but it's cool so people like it <laughs> I mean, <laughs> uh, i'll put up a picture of springtrap right now just so you can get a, a good glimpse of um yeah of that guy that guy um, right there. That, oh, guy? Ooh, yeah, that fella, William Afton, right he's there. He's pretty rotted. It seems we've pretty much said what we could about the games so far, but um, so why don't we talk about that new movie starring the beloved Josh Hutcherson, right? Oh, for sure, Aiden. I know you love that movie. Yep, I have watched oh, yeah. it How about. Have you seen it? I've watched it about three times since it came oh. out. So you know, wow. I'm, I'm, I can, I can give a pretty most. in-depth look of this movie. I think, but um. Yeah. I think so too. <laughs> All right. So, oh. we're going to talk about the movie now. Let's uh let's give our thoughts. I'll let you guys go so, first so, since so, I've so, been so, doing so, a whole so. lot of talking. Right. It's Absolutely. my turn to recap now. So, one of them, I liked I thought the okay, even though it didn't make sense lore wise, I thought the actor they chose for Vanessa was really scarily accurate to the game version mm-hmm. of her or like at least how I would envision her as a real person. Yeah, no. I I personally like I'd kind of fallen out of Five Nights at Freddy's before the movie came out. I mean, I was a huge fan when I was younger. Like, I drew the characters. I drew my own characters. For I would want to see this. Uh, you will not find it. It's in, like, old sketchbooks of mine that are probably, no, like, in I the trash. Yeah, you find it. I, probably gone now. But, yeah, I mean, I was a huge fan. And I, I made, like, these videos. I made, like, videos of all the time. I, I like, had, like, an old, really old YouTube channel. That, like, I Did you do FNAF role plays? Oh, no, I po- I posted like videos where I was like where I would search up Five Nights at Freddy's on Google Maps and then I'd record it on like my really old iPhone and be like, guys, oh, it's real. Um, <laughs> but it, basically that's just to say I was <laughs> I was a big fan. Um, and so this movie was being it was like in production hell for like eight years, and okay. so like by the time it came out, I was like a fan, you know. Now they're making another one. Okay. So like yeah, like while it was like being made, it was like it was like bah. and then it came out and then I wasn't really into it and then I watched it and I was like, oh, oh. now I now I actually like it again. <laughs> and so it made me really excited and it reminded me why I loved it so much. And even though the movie, like, from an objective standpoint, isn't good, as a Five Nights at <laughs> Freddy's as a Five Nights at Freddy's fan, it was really fun to watch and I liked seeing all the characters come to life. Yeah, speaking of playing the live stream. So, I think I'm on, like, the same boat with you, Aiden, in, in, like, how when the movie got, like, announced officially, I wasn't really, like, super indulged with the game as I used to be. But, like, after the announcement, I, I got back in because I started getting a lot of videos recommended. But I think I really liked how, just in general, having these characters that I've known for so long put up on a screen from a, like, starting from, like, an indie game up to a full production movie. I thought that was... Really awesome to see, but like the movie itself, like you said, as a movie, wasn't the best. And I know how the movie wasn't like a recreation of exactly what happens in the game, because I feel like that would yeah, be like a five-part movie. Yeah, there was but, like there was some very big deviations from the act from like the original story. Yeah, which is understandable. Like, 
yeah. for the game, you don't really have ability to or like much need to go into depth of like the animatronics as like as like the you know because they're they're dead children yeah. how they are well in the movie you have these scenes like where they build a fort they're a lot like more humanized in the movie yeah, compared yeah. To the game and they're not just which like... makes sense because you want them to be scary in the game and when you give them like characters and personalities it loses that like fear factor but in the movie it works out fine yeah, it kind of a mix, that whole thing is a kind of mixed bag because yeah, they do try to present the animatronics more with this side of the fact that it's like, hey guys, remember like these are children and they like yeah. have child like children within them, but they also like are. Uh, uh, it also took a weird turn where they were being manipulated by William Afton, which was never the mm-hmm. which was never a thing inside the games. Like he was never controlling them. Like they yeah. like they hated him freely. Like they like they wanted to kill <laughs> William Afton. Like if they saw him, it was on sight, you know. But mm-hmm. um, in the movie, it takes this approach where like he controls them, and like they yeah. have no memory of the fact that they even died to him in the first place. So it's like this this yeah. weird dynamic that they have. And the re- the the reason they're aggressive in any way, shape, or form is to protect the place itself not because they're like ben- yeah, the vengeful. Reason they're, like they're like he like the reason they're vengeful is because they're just they're just trying to continue the murderous rampage of william afton which is a very strange yeah. turn to take because the reason they're angry in the games is because like oh you're like you look like the dude that killed us we're gonna kill you now or like you know you work in the same place we died in and you're like a dude so we're gonna kill you yeah i mean <laughs> Which I can, I guess I can understand that change since you have like only two hours to establish a story. If you like go along with like how the game works it, you have to go through how like Springtrap kills all these children, stuffs them in suits. And in the first game, Springtrap isn't even alive. Like, like I said, like he's yeah. been dead at that time, but in the movie he's alive. That's just too. Yeah, and it takes, and it takes a big it takes a big step in a different like it removes all the stuff about it that's very convoluted like it tries to keep it as bare bones as possible by but still like keeping the original identity like like mike like um mike schmidt is just a random guy like he has no connection to william afton or anything anymore so here i actually realized that we forgot to talk about vanessa so i'm gonna put in an a little part that me and my friends put uh, in post where we talk about her character in regard of the the game uh, before we talk about her in the movie just so things aren't confusing. Just wanted to put this little editor's note here to let you know what's going on. Yep. There is also this character. um, She's a strange case. Uh, Her name is Vanessa. Um, And she was introduced in the most recent game, not even like... Yeah, she was was introduced, actually. Yeah, she was introduced in Security Breach, um, which was the one that we were talking about. We didn't really like that much. Like, she was introduced as kind of this, like, person in, like, a bunny suit, and she, like, running around with, like, a knife trying to kill you. But not Bonnie, though. It was different. And then there was also Glitch Trap. There's a lot of rabbits. There's like yeah, four, Glitch Trap is like the consciousness of William Afton, but like in a VR headset. Yeah, so basically like, like what, what happens with her is she was hired as a play tester for, um, for a Five Nights at Freddy's VR game, which is actually real. And mm-hmm. basically she, while playing the game, was possessed by a, a digital <laughs> version of William Afton. It's but exactly yeah, um, like we're not going to really explain how William Afton was put inside of a game because i don't actually that, that itself is just like i don't actually yeah, really know if you're really curious you could look that up but i i actually don't know that tidbit of how william afton's soul got put inside of a game but anyways um oh, baby. but yeah he uh <laughs> but, but uh yeah basically he um uh yeah, so yeah, so she gets possessed, and basically what we see is the aftermath of that in Security Breach, mm-hmm. uh, where she's working as a night guard in this new pizza place, but she's also like, you know, does like a shift and turns into Van- and turns into Van, yeah, which is the, the split bunny. personality. Yeah, um, yeah, but that's basically her deal. She's not very um, major though. She kind of shows up for that game, and then that's it. Mm-hmm. But then they bring her back in the movie, yeah, which they- makes little to no sense. All right, uh, so now we will be coming back to the normal podcast. Vanessa is 
now his William Afton's daughter. And that was really weird because she, because the whole point of her was that she was just a random person that Mm -hmm. had no, that, 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 yeah, she was hired to test a a VR game for the five, for the five nights at Freddy's company, which, and she was like possessed or whatever, but it's like, it's, uh, but the thing is it makes like hearing that the fact that she played a VR game and was possessed of by like a ghost, but because he played the VR game, like yeah, I, I think I understand why they took the approach to like make it not stupid, um, and made it make more sense of why she was in the story at all. I think there's stuff to appreciate it in that way, and I really hope that like in the next movie they can do a little bit more, uh, and kind of explore that. They should put more jump scares in the second. Yeah, movie, they I should think. go like. Nyah. Yeah, they should go. Yeah, they should go all out. <laughs> um, oh, but also we should talk about the actual like the 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 effects, like the actual like like because like the animatronics, they aren't animated. They're completely real. They got the yeah, uh, they're real. They got the yeah, Jim Henson right. puppeteer like team to like create suits. So the editor, throw a picture of uh the behind the scenes footage right now. Yeah. So um, just like real FNAF. You could wear the costumes, or you could put like a uh, fixture inside of it to like move it around. Yeah. So what was interesting about them was actually like you were saying, it's like because they had it where people could wear them, so like they could act out the scenes, but then they also had it where they were real animatronics in certain scenes, and so that was wasn't cool. uh, Foxy for most of it an animatronic because like his legs, his legs. They hide people's legs in there. Yes. Yeah, so I think it, he was only really a person when it was like the upper torso like yeah shots. so like mm-hmm. for the ones where they wanted to show him like walking uh like it needed to be uh uh like it needed to just show only the feet because like they were like lifting the foot up manually and putting it back yeah, down and again and then lifting there's it there's a scene where like it's very obviously someone picking up like uh like a hat, like part of his foot and just stomping it on the ground yeah it's really it is it is really funny but it makes sense like they wanted to make it as because uh because foxy doesn't have feet that are covered like they're just yeah. they're, it's just exposed yeah, robot just, yeah. it's just exposed the robot spin, feet. spindly little pipes yeah as, so like, like so they had to like find a way around the like with two foxy. metal straws like little pipe cleaners but um yeah and then there's uh of course your uh the beloved josh hutcherson as the the main character mike schmidt for sure. Oh yeah. Um, what 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 are, what are your guys' personal experiences with Josh Hutcherson? What do you think of the guy? I have a personal experience. So my sister decided it would be a really good idea to stream all of Hunger Games for like a week, and then she just wouldn't stop talking about it. That's all I have. Yeah. Um, Josh Hutcherson, like, I only it was interesting because I saw the movie, the FNAF movie. I learned about him, and then I realized that I've seen him in like a ton of other stuff in the past and I just didn't realize. Yeah, no, I, I think I think Josh Hutcherson's a cutie patootie. Yeah. Um he's definitely the highlight of the movie. Um he uh he brought on a lot of uh there's a lot of edits of him, a lot of really cool videos. Uh <laughs> We're so baby. Uh, We're just, so baby. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, you know. uh we really yep. we re- we love you Josh Hutcherson. Just just so you know. Um Especially me. Uh Five Night Freddy. So, yeah. yeah. Uh but the movie definitely was a cinematic masterpiece, uh, from what we could tell. Um, no matter what they say. But <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, <laughs> in all in all seriousness, uh, it was a movie made for the fans, and not those who are not as familiar with the series probably won't enjoy it. But us here, the true fans. Yeah, the big the big fans here. We uh, we we like it. Would, we 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 like it. I mean, I love it, but I can't can't so... speak for everyone. But, um, so fun fact: the the king of the king FNAF was not able to attend the was not able to be an actor in the movie in like a couple of yeah he he also wasn't able to be on the podcast today we were supposed to have Mark yeah. Dwyer, uh, we invited he, him he but like, said yes yeah. he said yes but he had something he had something to do yeah he he, 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 had, he had to film his other movie yeah, Iron yeah. so Long. he's filming yeah. a movie based on like a vi- a video game yeah yeah so video he, he would have been here but he's not but it, it's all right we'll, we'll get him next time the video game is called Fortnite by the way but, for all the for the audio listeners at home. And it's spelled and night is spelled N I T E. So that's right, like like how they did in the olden days. <laughs> yeah, Fortnite. yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, so I mean, despite our gripes with it, uh, 
it would seem uh yeah it's pretty pretty good uh but yeah since it would seem we have gotten our fill of this bear and his entourage uh i think mm -hmm. it's about time we move on to the end of this podcast right. today Five Nights at Freddy's is a huge phenomenon that has been taking the internet by storm for years. And it was a huge part of the lives of kids like uh, me, Max, and Jay. Um, you know, the the three of us here, we love Five Nights at Freddy's, as I've said. Um, and more. Yeah, Maybe. and more. All around the world. Uh, much can... <laughs> Everyone loves yeah, Freddy no, Fazbear. Like we love Freddy Fazbear. All right. Uh, much can be said about the current state of the franchise, but there's still a lot to love about it. And I think it is hard to top the Fazbear. The iconic Ooh. characters, the gameplay formula, and story are something to keep you hooked if you have been a longtime fan. If you are interested in it, though, definitely try to play it. You might find that you enjoy it. I've for sure seen people who have never done as much as look at it end up loving it. Just beware the jump scares, you'll probably get caught off guard. <laughs> Uh, yeah, just like me, uh, having to play a no volume every time I <laughs> looked at it. But yeah, um, thank you all for listening to yet another episode of This Just In. Uh, thank you, Max and Jay, for joining me on today's episode. It was really fun Bars. having you on. Oh, um, anytime, I had a great time here. Yeah, great. yeah I had a great time, time here with Markiplier. Fun. It was really nice. Yeah, was <laughs> I wish he talked a bit more, but it's okay. He's just a little yeah, shy. He's well, I think he was on mute the whole time, but he didn't. Yeah. Oh, no, he's probably on deaf He's too. gone now. Yeah, oh, wow. He, yeah. I think he got embarrassed. <laughs> All right, it's fine. <laughs> bye, Mark <Markiplier. laughs> All right. So until next time, bye-bye. <laughs>